Hi, all my wonderful TM joiners. This video is part two of a series about my wonderful children and what they've gone through with allergies, tonsils, adenoids, tongue posture, mouth breathing, tongue tie, tooth crowding, and more. If you haven't already, be sure to check out part one, which I've linked both above and below. This has been quite a journey for both my sweet children. Throughout this entire process, I've had to advocate for them, do all my own research, and figure things out based on my background as a general dentist and my unique knowledge as a TMJ dentist. If you have children, I highly recommend watching this video in its entirety because what my children have gone through is incredibly common and often unrecognized and undiagnosed. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Priya Mistri and I'm a general dentist with a practice in Vancouver, Washington, where we are dedicated to taking care of those with TMJ disorder. Please subscribe to this channel to be notified when new videos come out. In this video, I'll be talking about tongue posture, diet, mouth breathing, and facial development. Let's start by talking about tongue posture. Believe it or not, there's such a thing as correct tongue posture. Correct tongue posture is when the tip the middle and the back of your tongue rests up against the roof of the mouth with a light suction or light pressure. Like this. Why is that important? Having the tongue in the correct position from infancy puts pressure on the roof of the mouth, which influences mid-face growth. Over time, this pressure causes the maxillary bones to grow wide, flat, and forward. This ideal growth pattern allows all the teeth to fit in the dental arches without crowding. Diet plays a big role here too. If we're chewing whole unprocessed foods, we're using more chewing muscles. As these muscles develop, they apply pressure to the bones of the face. So tongue posture and muscle activity work together to shape the face. If the tongue is not in the right position and the diet is filled with processed foods, these developmental pressures don't occur. As a result, the face develops to be narrow, long, or arched both upward and growing downward instead of forward. The dental arches also may not develop to their full genetic potential, resulting in crowded teeth. Here are some comparison photos. The first shows more ideal development and the second shows development affected by low tongue posture. Now let's talk a bit more about diet. Before processed food became common around the 1930s, humans mostly ate whole, unprocessed foods that required a lot more chewing. Once engaged, these muscles would develop more, and these more developed muscles would apply force to the bones in the face, specifically the maxillary bones and the mandible, the jawbone. This muscle activity worked in harmony with tongue posture to guide proper development of the dental arches. When the arches develop to their full genetic potential, they have enough space to accommodate all the teeth, even the wisdom teeth. Teeth didn't crowd the way they do now before the 1930s. In places where diets still consist of whole unprocessed foods, we continue to see ideal development and enough space for all the teeth. The next point may be a little controversial, but historically, children were breastfed until the age of five or six. This was partly due to the benefits of breast milk and partly due to limited access to other food sources. Nursing is much more challenging for the baby than drinking from a bottle. Because of this, extended breastfeeding plays a role in developing the facial and chewing muscles, which in turn supports the development of the facial bones and the dental arches. I want to stress, this is not about judgment. My babies both had tongue ties and I bottle fed them from very early on. I'm sharing this so you can connect the dots as to why nearly every child today seems to need braces due to crowding when this was not always the case. Let's move on to mouth breathing. Children may begin breathing through their mouths if they have a tongue tie or if their adenoids or tonsils are enlarged. The adenoids are tissue that's located directly behind the nose, similar to the tonsils. When enlarged, they can obstruct the nasal airway and cause obstructive sleep apnea. Obstructive sleep apnea, OSA, is when a person stops breathing for 10 seconds or more 
multiple times a night. This prevents the body from entering deep restorative sleep. Deep sleep is crucial for releasing growth hormone, recovering from illness, regulating hormones, and strengthening the immune system. Without it, children's overall health can be affected. To breathe through the mouth, the tongue must be on the floor of the mouth rather than up at the palate. If the tongue stays down all the time due to mouth breathing, this will negatively impact facial development. All of these factors, tongue ties, diet, poor tongue posture, mouth breathing, and lack of breastfeeding can combine to derail ideal facial development. Instead of growing wide, flat, and forward, the face grows narrow, arched, and downward with crowded teeth. So here are some more visuals. One shows ideal development with a flat and wide palate. And remember, the roof of the mouth is also the floor of the nose. A flat palate means a flat nasal floor, which supports good breathing. The second image shows less than ideal development with a high arched palate, which can push up the nasal septum and cause a deviated septum which creates more breathing issues. I started learning all of this when my children were just one and three years old. They are now six and eight years old. I noticed both of them mouth breathing and snoring. My son was even grinding his teeth at night. If you're wondering about your own children, start observing whether they breathe through their nose or their mouth. Watch them sleep to see if they snore or if they grind their teeth, or if their mouths are open when they're sleeping. These could be signs of airway issues or disrupted facial development. If you suspect sleep apnea, I recommend seeing a pediatric sleep doctor. They may suggest a lab sleep study. If sleep apnea is diagnosed, the first line of treatment is usually removing the tonsils and the adenoids to actually open the airway. Other signs of potential airway or developmental issues include mouth breathing, drooling, snoring, teeth grinding, and bedwetting past the age of four. So where are my kids now on this journey? My son had his tonsils and adenoids removed and his tongue tie released just a few months ago. Right after surgery, on the same day, immediately he could pronounce the letters R and L properly, which he couldn't before. His breathing and his congestion also improved, but he is still breathing through his mouth. Why? because now it's a habit. So we're retraining his muscles through myofunctional therapy, which is like physical therapy for the tongue and facial muscles. The four main goals of this therapy are one, correct tongue posture at all times, two, nasal breathing at all times, three, lip seal at all times except when speaking and eating, and four, proper swallow function. My kids had actually already started myofunctional therapy before surgery, and they also wear special mouthpieces that cover the roof of the mouth. While these mouthpieces may not be ideal right now for tongue posture, they help expand the palate, and in my daughter's case, they're guiding the growth of her jaw forward. Her jaw is set pretty far back. One benefit we've seen is that my daughter, who had an extreme overjet, which means her jaw was really far back compared to these bones here. She can now close her lips more easily. Her overjet is starting to improve. That's huge. The dentist we're working with uses a method called functional jaw orthopedics or FJO to guide facial growth. It's a system based out of Portugal and I'm very grateful for what it's done so far and that there was a dentist that offers this in my area. You can look up FJO online to try to find a provider near you but they are kind of hard to find. If you suspect airway issues, look for airway-centric ear, nose, and throat doctors or a pediatric sleep doctor. These can also be hard to find. The names I know are Dr. Bobby Gahari in Portland, Oregon, and Dr. Sarush Zaghi at the Breathe Institute in Southern California. So I hope you found this information helpful and thank you so much for watching. Again, I'm Dr. Priya Mistri, and if you found this helpful at all, please feel free to subscribe, to like, to share it with your family and friends. And remember, you can never have TMI about TMJ. Thank you.